Hey guys, Raw Motivations here, Ben Taylor here to be able to talk to you some just about narcissism and narcissists and trauma bonds. If you guys haven't followed my channel yet, we'd love to have you subscribe, but really I'm on this channel and on several social media platforms to talk about narcissism and to bring about awareness about narcissism, the, the shit that it happens, the shit that it destroys, how it's destroyed my life, how it's hurt my life, how it's hurt my relationship with my wife, how it's destroyed relationships, all the crap that falls out with narcissism. Now, people don't realize what it is. I mean, people don't realize what's happening. People don't realize that they're in narcissistic, abusive relationships. Maybe for them it's because of how they were raised and they feel like that aspect is actually love or that aspect feels normal to them. But in reality, a lot of people are in relationships with people that are very self-centered, that are very narcissistic, that are very toxic, that are just plain out abusive a lot of times, and they don't realize it. They don't understand what's actually going on. And over a period of time, that abuse becomes so prevalent that a lot of times it'll turn into what we often typically refer to as a trauma bond. The trauma bond is the idea that there's been so much trauma, there's been so much back and forth, there's been so much dissonance, this push-pull of I love you, I hate you, I say I love you, I hit you, like all this type of stuff that goes back and forth that gets people really confused of like, wait a second, like cognitively, this doesn't make sense for me to be with this person. They lie, they cheat, they manipulate, they hit me. Why, why should I still be with this person? But emotionally, the story and the thought is, I still want to be with this person. Like, I can't live without them. I'm not worthy with someone else. I'm not good enough to find love someone else. No one else will love me if I'm not in this relationship. This is as good as it gets. And the thoughts and the lies that goes through people's heads about being stuck in that type of relationship is, is wild. But it all comes from the narcissist and the lies and the thoughts and the feelings that they place on another person through lies, through manipulation, through gaslighting, through future faking, to the point where you start to doubt yourself. You start to doubt your reality. You start to doubt what is a good relationship and what is a bad relationship. What is love and what is not. And oftentimes people will ask me, they'll be like, what about the narcissist and trauma bonds? Like, can a narcissist get trauma bonded? And a lot of times they're talking about the narcissist getting trauma bonded with the victim or with the empath, quote unquote. And the idea there is that they're trauma bonded being like they don't want to go back to this person, but they still like feel like they want to go back. And that's the part that you kind of have to like disconnect a little bit because you have one party that's like, oh, I really want to be with this person. And you have the narcissist that's like, wouldn't they love me back? Wouldn't they want this as well? Not really. Because the narcissist is a more about the infatuation with their image and control of that than they are with you than they are with how you feel, than they are with your feelings and your emotions, than they are with what you do with your time, than they are with, excuse me, who do you spend time with, than they are with the job that you have. Now, I know there's a lot of narcissists that manipulate a lot of those things. I'm not saying that that's not valid and not out there. But a lot of narcissists get to the place where they just don't care. And there's a hard reality for a lot of people to digest and to hear and to understand that the person that they've poured their time, their money, their attention, their love and affection into it looks back at them with a dead look and just says, I don't care. Or they say, I love you, but all their actions prove that they don't care. Sometimes people ask me how I know so much about the trauma bond. Like, how does it actually affect me? Well, like I said, I don't think narcissists get trauma bonds with their victims. I don't think they get trauma bonds with other empaths or anything like that. And I do think narcissists can develop a trauma bond with someone else that's in that cluster B category. Whether that's antisocial, histrionic, uh, borderline, or narcissistic, I do think that that's possible. One of the main reasons I think that's possible because I think that's something that I experienced. With a person that I was with that had BPD, borderline personality and narcissistic traits. And over the period of time when that relationship, that relationship was formed under fire, was formed under the radar so that people didn't know about it. It was an affair. It was an affair that I had while I was with my wife. And it was an affair that happened slowly over time and got to the place where it became more and more controlling. Now you might be saying like, well, you're the narcissist, so you're controlling it. Yes. But then as it kept going, I started to be controlled. I started to have my thoughts, my impressions, my responses 
be something that would sideline every single else in the house, in the workplace, in the friend environment, whatever it would be, to the point where I was controlled as well. And there's an idea of like fear. There's an idea of terror that I would even have about this other person. Of what are they going to do? How are they going to react? How are they going to take the limelight? How are they going to focus everything on themselves and I won't get anything? And those narcissistic tendencies started to like hit together and they started to wage war at each other. And they started to be very manipulative, very toxic to the point where the other person would say a lie and then come back later and tell the truth just to provoke my frustration and then get mad at me for being frustrated that they lied. And it would go back and forth, this crazy cycle, time and time and time again, that led me to a place where I was stuck and I didn't want to let go. I didn't want to let go even though I knew this person wasn't helpful for me. So I finally came around to it and got to the place where I confessed it. I brought it up. I told my wife. I told people, this is what happened. And here's the thing. After I said that, after I acknowledged it, after there wasn't anything happening with the two of us, I couldn't let go. Just wanted to hold on. It's an aspect of I wanted to hold on, but I was also scared that they would let go because they would. They would let go. They'd leave. They'd ghost. They'd come back. They'd leave again. They'd ghost. They'd come back. And I didn't want to lose that. I was like, maybe we can make it work. Maybe I can change something. Maybe I can do something different to be able to keep this relationship, to be able to keep all of us working under the same roof, under the same household. And the messed up mentality of trying to fight for something, for someone who wasn't fighting for me, trying to fight for someone who is using me, trying to fight for someone who lied to me. And that's where I started to develop that kind of like trauma bond. Do I think I developed it to the same point as some of the people I talked to on a day-to-day basis? No. But I know it was there because there wasn't a discard phase for me. It wasn't like I was like, all of a sudden, okay, this person's done. They're out of my life and I walked away. I couldn't walk away. I didn't know how. So we're talking after I brought this up, after I communicated this to multiple people, after my wife was brought into the awareness and my pastor, like my, my counselor, like all these different people were brought in. They knew about it. It was another 10 months of having this person consistently in my work and in my life and in my home with other people there before I was able to cut them out. The trauma bond is real. And for a lot of people out there, you think you're going crazy. You don't understand why you're crying over someone that has only lied to you. You don't understand why you miss someone that has repetitively cheated on you. And you feel crazy. You feel like, I don't understand why I'm feeling this way. I don't understand what's going on. I don't understand these emotions, these thoughts that I'm dealing with on a day-to-day basis. Like, how in the world is this happening? And you feel stuck. And a lot of times what I do in working with people with our coaching sessions, like weekly coaching sessions, is we work on dealing with the trauma bond. We work on identifying the feelings the emotion, we pull up a wheel so you can get an idea of where you fall on the spectrum of the emotions that you're feeling. And as people get vulnerable and actually show and reveal what they're feeling, what the emotions are, we get down a little bit below and we see the story that they're actually telling themselves. We're all made up of the stories that we tell ourselves. The problem is sometimes those stories aren't true at all. And they've been inundated with lies from the narcissist. They've been inundated with the gaslighting and the future faking from a toxic person. And we get to that and we say, hey, let's work on identifying what this is. Let's work on evaluating it by the facts and let's work on reestablishing, rewiring your mind to live whole and healthy. And as we do that, we start taking out the triggers and the things that sideline you, the triggers that distract you, the things that pull you back. And we replace those with positivity. We replace those with those positive stories, the the triggers that are going to help you grow and change. Then we move on through coaching into the limbo land, detoxing from the narcissist, the peace that doesn't feel peaceful. You're not actively being abused, but you're still wanting that person. You're still losing those like strains that can't keep pulling at you. And then we work on your future, your vision, your values of where you're going to go and where you're going to grow to get to the place 
That when that toxic person appears, when they walk into your life, when you see them or you run into the store, there's not even a pull. There's not even a thought. Because you're like, I have grown so much more than how you made me feel. I've grown so much more than the abuse that you put me through. If that's you today and you want to talk more, click on the link down below to be able to contact me, be able to grab a time. Check out my website, rawmotivations.com. See a little bit of what I'm about. Go through some of my other videos. Subscribe if you haven't already. And go to TikTok, Instagram, Facebook to get small nuggets of truth as they come out every single day talking about narcissism, that awareness, that growth, that healing, that change. And that's what I'm on this platform for.